I'm running to be everyone's president. Those who vote for me, and even those we who don't want vote you. For me. America is a better country without you. And a question that everyone here should ask. Are you Canadian? Now, is that guy here with the sunglasses? As long as we have a viable path to victory, I am competing to the end. If we win Indiana, it's over. There is the lead up. Let's look live at what's happening in Indiana this morning. The polls opened at 6 o'clock. There has been a steady stream of traffic ever since, as we have picked in, picked, uh, it peaked in over the last three hours or so. Voters in Indiana get their say today, both for the Democrats and the Republicans, the Hoosier State primary. That means it's time for our primary primer with Keith Bogue. Cue the intro. <laughs> <laughs> Your own special theme music. I love that. Good morning, Keith Bogue. Good morning, Heather. Great yeah, to see it. you. I know. It's kind of nice. Listen, uh, so Indiana primary day, and here are the stakes as stated by Ted Cruz himself. Let's bring this up. It is the common sense and good judgment of the Hoosier State that is the one thing that stands between us and plunging over the cliff, meaning the nomination will go to Donald Trump. Is that hyperbole, or will we know that by day's end, Keith? Well, I think one thing it is is, is a, uh, an attempt to try to f refer back to the sentiment of Wisconsin, where Cruz won big with a message that said, "We're the you know the heartland of America. We're the sensible people. We're polite. Uh, we take our politics seriously, and we don't go for the latest fad of the moment." Uh, but Indiana does not look like it's going to turn out the same way for Ted Cruz that Wisconsin did. Uh, Donald Trump is leading by double digits there. Whether Ted Cruz thinks that's going to push the party over the edge of the uh, uh, over a cliff, well, you know. Some people might agree with him, but more people are coming around uh, to the view that if it's Trump, they might as well get behind him and make the best of it that they can. Well, that's interesting because, you know, there was not just Ted Cruz, there was the whole constituency of hashtag never Trump people. But now we're kind of seeing them as being, as, as one pun that I read said, reluctantly Trump. I mean, people, even his fierce opponents, seem to be coming around. Is that your read? Hashtag never Trump became. Hashtag never really got going. <laughs> yeah, they are coming around, you know, and I, I, I listen to the commentary out there from conservatives and what they are saying now in public. And, uh, you know, they have begun to say that they can work this, that they can find a way um, to market Donald Trump. And maybe even more incredibly, uh, some of them are saying, you know, we have a thing or two to learn from Donald Trump about all of this. And what they're pointing to is the obvious evidence of the campaign itself and how Donald Trump was able to do things that they thought were impossible. And so they now are trying to tell themselves that that will be the way the general election goes as well, that there is more than one way to build up their base, that they don't need necessarily to follow a prescription for more inclusiveness. They can do what Donald Trump does and excite parts of the base that have been disengaged for politi from politics for decades and perhaps win the White House that way. Um, you know, that may be wishful thinking. Many people think it is. But we've seen so many things in this campaign that have been unpredictable or that would have been defied the common sense wisdom of the establishment for months now. You can easily understand why people were say, might be saying now, well, why don't we believe in this too? Why won't, why won't we just believe in Donald Trump? Defying the conventional wisdom is the theme of your latest piece on cbcnews.ca, and I'd certainly recommend people spend some time taking a look at your analysis. As people have moved toward Donald Trump, of course, the pol uh, political obituary writing has begun for Ted Cruz. What happened to this promising campaign for him? One of the lines in your piece caught my eye. Candidate Cruz is the thin reed on which hang all the remaining hopes of Republican insiders. Republican insiders. Now, that's ironic because people are saying that what has gone wrong with the Cruz campaign is that he started to embrace the Republican establishment. He made deals, including with John Kasich, to win at all costs, those Faustian bargains. And then he ceased to become the outsider that he portrayed himself initially. Absolutely. At the beginning of this campaign, he was about as far as you can imagine away from the establishment. They didn't like him. They didn't like him because of the way that he behaved uh, in, in uh, the Senate, in Congress. They didn't think he was a team player. And if he was a team player, well, he certainly wasn't on their team. And look where they are now. I mean, the gravitation of those former candidates from the Republican campaign has been towards 
uh, Ted Cruz, and they are probably, I'm thinking of Marco Rubio, of Jeb Bush, uh, sorry, not Rubio, but just uh, Jeb Bush, Carly Fiorina, and so on. They are probably more surprised than anyone to land where they are. But that's what this race has done. It's made Ted Cruz, of all things, the establishment candidate in the final hours. But that is melting away, as I said before, as the establishment begins to think, you know, is it really worth twisting ourselves inside out for Ted Cruz? I mean, how much better off are we going to be doing that? He hasn't even got the most votes in this. Why don't we recognize the reality, which is, in a sense, recognize that the establishment has lost this campaign. Donald Trump has won it. Whether he gets the most delegates or not is, has become almost irrelevant because he clearly has the support of Republicans out there. He is going to be so close to winning a majority of delegates, even if he doesn't have it, that it would be a very, very huge risk for the future of the party to turn its back on him now. Keith, uh, he leads right now in the polls heading into Indiana by 15 points. It's much closer on the Democrat side of things between Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. But I want to ask you about something that Bernie Sanders said. His fundraising, which had set records, has started to fall off. He's down by $20 million from last month, which may be indicating some of his support is waning as well. And yet he said this, and let's bring up this quote, it is virtually impossible for Secretary Clinton to reach the majority of convention delegates by June 14th with pledged delegates alone. She will need superdelegates to take her over the top of the convention in Philadelphia. In other words, and this is the key, the convention will be a contested contest. So what is his strategy? I mean, he's, he's reaching into the Republican playbook at a, at a certain point, emphasizing a contested convention. What's the strategy for Bernie Sanders in that? I don't know that there really is one, Heather. I mean, you know... What he is saying is that Hillary Clinton doesn't own the party in a certain sense because she needs superdelegates in order to win the nomination. But you know what? So does he. And the truth is that he has a couple of, uh, she has a couple of million more votes among Democrats than he has. What is his answer to that argument? What we're heading towards is a convention, a Democratic convention, that is not altogether different from the one that elected Barack Obama. Uh, the difference being that that race between Obama and Clinton was closer than this race is between Clinton and Sanders. But uh, Obama did need the superdelegates. What happened then, and Clinton is reminding people now, in particular Sanders supporters, what happened then was that she admitted that she had lost before the convention. She nominated him on the floor of the convention uh, when they had it, and she is asking that or saying that she hopes that's what Bernie Sanders does and that's what Bernie Sanders supporters do as well. Understand the reality of where they are, accept it, and come together behind her. She realized the damage that could be done. Otherwise, he has not yet come to that point, or so it seems. And so our discussion will continue next week for sure. I'll see you then, Keith. Thank you very much. Take care. Thank you.